My personal world has just come crumbling down around me. Handgunning used to be such a joyous affair, an escape from my obsessive, compulsive nature which comes out when I shoot and reload for rifles. But all of that has come to an end. Gavin Gear here from UltimateReloader.com. I'm talking about the fact that I just got a Ransom pistol rest from Ransom International. This is a mechanical device, it's the industry standard, and with it you can evaluate the mechanical accuracy of a handgun and you can evaluate the relative precision of a particular set of ammunition, a particular type or load in a particular handgun. This is actually good news because now I can dive deep into handgun accuracy, the accuracy of the gun itself the accuracy of particular loads that I load or factory ammunition. This is actually awesome. And I wanted to kick it all off with a simple set of experiments that I ran. I actually started with the Glock 20 with a 40 Smith & Wesson barrel in it. And then I threw a 1911 in the ransom rest. I've got a story upcoming on that. I'm just waiting on some components. What I thought would be really cool since I had a round butt end frame Smith & Wesson 629 compatible insert would be to put my two 629s up against each other. I've got a four inch, totally bone stock, stainless 629 partial underlug, and I've got this custom full underlug, six inch 629. Why is it black, you say? Well, I actually took this thing completely apart, sent it to Ion Bond, and had them Ion Bond it, which is basically a synthetic diamond coating and I reassembled it because I liked the idea of the all-weather aspect of the 629, but I like blued revolvers as well. So, all that to say, what if we put both of these Smith & Wesson 629s in the ransom rest and tested the same ammo in them? And then I thought, well, what I really want to know is with something like this 6-inch 629, what if we took progressively loaded ammo, which is what I usually shoot out of handguns, and compare the accuracy of that ammo to the same identical load, but loaded with absolute obsessive match grade techniques. And that's what I'm gonna show in this video. So, let me show you the loading processes, and then I'll show you the test rig with the ransom rest that I used to evaluate the ammunition. I'll share the results, and then I'll talk to you about some future testing that I want to do and next steps with this awesome tool. So let me talk about the components and the load real quick. Of course, this is use at your own risk. Always double, triple check with published load data before attempting to load ammo with this data. So for this story, I'm using Vitivori N350. This is going to be a powder that's ideal for 44 Special, and that was kind of what I centered my load around. 44 special load level in a 44 Magnum case. I don't have any 44 special handguns. I like to shoot 44 Magnum brass so that I don't get crud ring build up, that kind of thing. I'm using brand new Starline 44 Magnum cases. These are my standard case. They work extremely well. They hold up really good, including for hot loads. Using Wolf large pistol primers and Hornady interlock bullets. These are 265 grain. In my testing, these did well for accuracy, so I used these as kind of the standard bullet for the tests that I ran. For the powder charge, I was at 6.4 grains, which is below max for 44 Special. Wanted to have a fairly mild recoiling load. I tested at max and then down at 6.4. I think max was around 8. So the 6.4 grain load did well, and that was what I used for the testing. All right, let me go over the progressive loading setup real quick. I'm using the Hornady Lock and Load AP Five Station Progressive. This has the lock and load bushing system so that you can remove and install dies really quickly. I'm using the number 30 shell plate, which is the 44 Magnum shell plate. And for die station utilization, station number one is empty because I've got brand new brass, so it does not need sizing or depriming. I've got an expander number two, powder measure number three, seating in station number four and crimping in station number five. This is a Hornady die set. 
And then I've also got an RCBS cedar die that I'm using only the crimping function on. I like to seat and crimp separately. I think it works better and it also makes it a lot easier to manipulate the seating depth when you switch from bullets and to separately set the crimp without affecting seating depth. So for each cycling of the handle, I get a round of loaded ammunition. I have to push really hard here to prime because these Wolf large pistol primers, I don't know, in my experience, they seem to be maybe even a little oversized. Okay. So when you get things set up, it's a smooth operation. And you gotta love the speed. So let me give you kind of a high level overview of this match grade pistol loading setup and then I'll show you each process up close for loading a round of ammunition. Using the Lyman All-American 8 turret, this is great for match grade pistol loading because you can quickly switch between the dies. So I've got a, an RCBS expander die and then a Lee bullet seating die and a Lee factory crimp die that I'm going to use on the press. I'm using a Lee Auto Bench Prime off the press for priming. I really like the feel that I can get with that. I've got the new Lyman Brass Smith powder measure, which I've dialed in to throw about six grains so I can trickle up 0.4 to get up to the appropriate charge weight. I'm using an RCBS aluminum powder trickler. I'm using the new Lyman Brass Smith beam scale. I'll have another video. Uh, going into more depth on that and then I've got a loading block here where I've got cases that I've already primed. So that's the match grade precision loading setup. Let's go through each of the processes. So we're going to take the pan and drop about six grains of powder and then carefully place it on the beam scale and move our trickler into position. Now I very carefully look at a completely straight on angle while trickling powder and wait until I see the zero line up with the marker exactly right there. Then I use a powder funnel to dump powder from the pan into the case. I insert the charged case into the shell holder. I perform an expansion on it. Then I place the bullet, seat the bullet, and then crimp the bullet. There we go, a match grade loaded round. So I proceeded to load a batch of bulk ammo with the Hornady Lock and Load AP and a batch of match ammunition with this match reloading setup here. And when the ammunition was assembled, it was then time to start getting the Smith & Wesson 629s set up in the ransom rest. It's a pretty simple process, but you kind of have to pay attention to details. The inserts are like clamshell halves. They have a sort of rubber molded material on the inside and the aluminum skins on the outside. You slide the first insert half in, you get the frame of the revolver pressed into it. You slide the other side over. Now you have a clamshell clamping down on the grip area of the frame. Then there's an ABC plate. This helps to apply even pressure to the insert halves. Some washers and thumb screws. Now, in some cases you have a gap like with Glocks between the rubber molded portions. In this case, since it's such a thin frame, those insert halves actually come together and touch. So it's all about even screw pressure at that point with the thumb screws. Then you need to fire some settling shots and this just enables the handgun to get settled into the same position after each shot. Super critical. Also while you're clamping things together you wiggle the frame of the revolver just a little bit so that again it can settle in. Once you get consistent groups then you can fire strings of shots. After a bunch of experimentation, what I found to work best was to shoot a five shot string and then adjust the windage with the adjustable windage base 
to approximately eight inches over. And with the red dot sight on the six inch 629, that was really easy because you can just look at the laser and see exactly where it's gonna be. Once I had dialed in the zero, it was exactly dead on. With the open sights on the four inch 629, you have to look a little bit closer, but I was able to use the same technique. In fact, I was able to get three groups on one sheet of paper in some cases. This saves quite a bit of time going back and resetting targets. And I think a system where you could advance targets would actually be really nice with two rolls, that kind of thing. The results of the testing are kind of interesting. What I found was, in terms of progressive versus match, this is at 19 yards. I took the average and then I extrapolated that out to 25 yards since 25 yards is kind of like 100 yards for rifle. It's a standard evaluation distance. So for the match ammunition, the average group size at 19 yards was 1.094. For the progressive ammo, it was 1.097. Basically the same. I'm confident that there's really no difference in the ammunition itself. Even though I'm using different dyes, even though I'm trickling the powder charge weight exactly up to the appropriate value each time, for this particular scenario with a factory firearm, it just doesn't matter. Now if I was going to shoot out way far or something like that, or if I had a custom match grade, you know, revolver, that might be a different story. The 25 yard equivalents were 1.439 inches and 1.44 inches. Had I shot more groups, I think it would have settled down to be even closer. So for my time, I think loading pistol ammo on a progressive so far looks like a sure bet. Might be interesting to follow this up with an autoloader but I think most of my attention is gonna to go to component selection and load development rather than worrying about load methodology. That's kind of my takeaway so far. On the four inch 629, this guy has a lot more miles on him and I think it might benefit a little bit from a deep cleaning of the cylinder. I might have a little bit of crud rings or something, not totally sure. I tested two kinds of ammo with the 4 inch 629, 240 grain bullets and 265 grain bullets. The 265s were the same exact load as tested in the 6 inch 629. So for the 240 grain loads, I was averaging about 1.42 inches at 19 yards, which is about 1.87 inches at 25 yards. Pretty good. What really caused things to go sideways was switching over to the 265 grain bullets. And that's where I had, I had two groups that I measured. One was 3.74 and one was 2.369. So the average was 3.055, which for a 25 yard equivalent is 4.019. So for whatever reason, the four inch 629 really didn't get along with those 265 grain bullets, whereas they did really well in the six inch 629. So I feel like I learned a lot putting these test results together and I feel like I've just scratched the surface. What are different handguns gonna do? What are different loads and different factory ammunition gonna do? If you're curious about anything in particular, please drop a comment. Do you have feedback about the test methodology and loading setup that I used here? Please drop a comment. Don't forget, I've got a lot of other great content coming up here on GavinTube, metalworking, gunsmithing, shooting, reloading. Make sure you're subscribed with notifications. If you liked this video, please give it a thumbs up. And I've also got these cool Ultimate Reloader shirts available at the Ultimate Reloader store. I'm on Patreon. There's links to all that in the video description. I've also got a full more in-depth article right up to share as well. That's the first link. Until next time, happy shooting and happy reloading.